Right, welcome back to the video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about materials uh, and specifically different types of blend modes for materials. So uh, I've created here just a very simple basic default material, uh, assigned it to this plane uh, and we're using currently an opaque and lit material. So what does opaque mean? Basically that there's no see-through pixels. Um, so if I can apply a quick colour here, maybe like some sort of mid red, something like that. Um, it's going to colourise all these pixels that colour and we're getting some lighting information so if I take my light source and I move the angle see it's affecting uh, our plane um, this is going to be our sort of standard material setup for 90 percent of environments and uh, props and characters and all that kind of stuff most things aren't see-through um, Unreal uses a full PBR shading model so we have metallic roughness um, I just those in as well. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail into a PBR, there's a lot of information about that uh, all over the internet uh, and I'm more interested in getting to some of the other blend modes. Um, so if you are interested go and look that up. But roughness controls how shiny it is. So we see we're getting a bit of reflection here of the sky. Put the roughness up to 1. It's going to go completely matte. Somewhere in the middle, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Getting different levels of reflectivity. Um, additionally we have uh, metallic so if we have a zero metallic, it's not doing any changes at all. Um, if we change that up to one, it's going to take that. It's going to colorize our reflections with the material color. Um, so we're getting this kind of like shiny red metal type effect. Um, half values don't really make sense. There's not a lot of things that are semi-metallic. Um, but sometimes you might want to use it for certain visual effects if that's how you want to go. Um, but like I said, we want to move on to other blend modes. So um, moving on from opaque, we have masked. Uh, and we'll notice we get this pin. So uh, opacity mask is now available. Uh, and if I just bring in a clouds noise, uh, this is just three different noise maps channel packed together. So here I'm just previewing just the red channel on its own. Um, and we can see we get this effect. So what's happening? Um, it's taking the... Um, the values in this mask and it's comparing against what's called the opacity mask clip value so default is 0.333 uh, so effectively anything in this mask that's 0.3 darker or 0.3 grey or darker uh, it's going to get masked out it's going to get not rendered um, anything grey or higher uh, 0.3 grey or higher it's going to be rendered so we're going to get this kind of like cut out effect um, we just check costs just using the shader complexity view up here in optimization, uh, you can see the pixels that are being rendered, um, the opaque ones are quite cheap. Uh, the holes um, have a bit more cost to them. Um, and this is amplified when we start layering this on top of each other. So you can see here we're getting some a bit more expensive rendering, um, but the, the opaque ones are always cheap. So um, if we plug a normal map into this, uh, I have a sort of water normals type thing. Um, this works with opaque as well. Uh, it's going to sort of uh, approximate or, or fake the um, the uneven surface of the uh, material. Um, this works with masks. Um, we get a nice kind of uh, response from that normal map. Um, pretty useful. Uh, anything when you want to have some a cheaper opacity, uh, things like leaves you want to cut out of a shape, maybe some signage or you want to have like a kind of um, levels of, of things on top of each other. Um, this is really powerful uh, and way of doing that. Um, yeah, so that's masked. Uh, moving down the list we get to translucent. Um, you'll notice the opacity mask pin turns off and the opacity pin turns on. So I just plug that cloud in. Um, so I should say the masked alpha is sometimes called uh, one bit alpha because it's only using a single bit of data to do that, so it's either on or off, there's no kind of grayscales in the middle. Uh, normal opacity is sometimes called 8-bit um, alpha, so we're using the full 8 bits of data in this channel, so full black to white and grayscale values in the middle, um, and we're getting this kind of like thin see-through um, kind of uh, model. Um, when we're using translucence, i just set that back to the default, um, we also have this option down here for lighting mode. So 
The default lighting mode is this one here, volumetric non-directional. Um, and we're getting the sort of the alpha to having an input, um, but we're not getting any normal map information. If we just hover over and have a look here, it says lighting calculated for volume. Uh, it's not the right tool tip. With directionality, no, I want non-directional. Here we are. Lighting calculated for volume without directionality. Uh, used for particle effects like smoke and dust. So you can see, hopefully, from this kind of clouds texture, how that could work as a sort of smoky, dusty type thing. Um, it is the cheapest method. So if we check our costs again, one single layer of translucency, not the end of the world. If we start making copies of this and adding them up, suddenly quite a lot of cost happening here uh, and things like smoke, fog, dust, fire um, we tend to have quite a lot of layers of them to make them look good so um, starts, uh, costs can start adding up and um, the way this, well the way Unreal kind of like uh, works with this is it assumes you're going to use the cheapest lighting model um, which is great, it works for um, smoke and fire things like that um, but it doesn't give us this normal map information so if we were doing something that we wanted to have some surface uh, some data on that some of that lighting coming through um, we'd want to use a different lighting model down here in the translucency so uh, volumetric directional uh, takes the material normals into account and you can see suddenly this pin goes white again and we get an input and then when I apply this we should get some of that water normal surface back again so you can see here we're getting some of that normal information so um, there is also this one surface translucency volume so actually if we're using water we probably want to be liked as a surface not as a volume um, and this is uh, even says here used for surfaces like glass and water um, it's quite a lot more expensive as a shading model and you can even see that in the compile times it takes quite a bit longer to um, to sort of like compile and, and apply that so uh, we'll give it a second but hopefully you can see you're getting that normal information and you're getting that kind of like full detail shading model so um, use it sparingly uh, when you need it for things like water surfaces and what have you um, I'll delete that um, it's good uh, but it is a bit more expensive so um, don't just turn it on for everything um, and then also we have two more shading models in here. I'm not going to go into forward shading. Um, this more for sort of mobile. So um, again, there's information around that for uh, like on the internet if you want to look up how that works. Um, but we also have these two here. So non-directional and directional, and then we also have per vertex non-directional and directional. So these first two, the ones we looked at, either no lighting information or lighting, um, they are calculating per pixel. Um, so if I change this to volumetric directional per pixel, um, turn this on. If I just take my plane and move it down underneath into the shadow, kind of see. Let's just turn the opacity mask off. So even though I'm not using anything in my opacity mask, I'm having an opacity of one. Still using this shading model, you can see. Hopefully, there's not a bad shadow across this. It's pretty accurate. Um, the shadow from this plane above um, fine but we can also do per vertex now this is a uh, very simple plane it's just the default plane from the engine so it's only got four vertices so if I apply this do per vertex lighting it's only going to light these four points and then all the values in the middle is just going to interpolate so you can see hopefully there's a, um, a dark line at that edge but it doesn't quite work the lighting as we would uh, expect it's not quite accurate but it's a lot cheaper because it's only doing four lighting calculations instead of a per pixel lighting calculation which is across the whole plane so um, a few different settings there we can, can play with for different sort of translucency um, they do like I say add up when you start layering a few of them on top of each other so um, by doing it per pixel versus per uh, vertex going to save some some cost there so uh, that's translucent so it's only a little few settings down here um, next we have additive so uh, an additive material that's not back as well um, it's just going to take what's in the um, in the shader that's being rendered and just add it on to what's there already so um, a bit like the screen blend mode uh, in Photoshop uh, if you've used that uh, and you can see here there's the um, pixels behind 
and then this is just kind of like getting adding on top. And if we start layering on top of these, it's getting more and more kind of more of that red colours coming through, more brighter. Um, so still could use the different lighting models down here. This still counts as a, a translucent one, so now I'm getting that normal map information again, but again with additional cost to do that. Um, hard to tell, but I think it is coming through. Yeah, you can see here in the preview um, that that's happening. Um, one thing I would say, when we're using additive, generally what we're doing is we're trying to model something that is its own light source. So fire, plasma, lightning, stuff like that. So because of that, yeah, currently we're still using a lit shading model. This additive is also being lit by the light source. So if I adjust the lighting here, it's changing how that works. Um, generally, if I'm using a additive material, I probably want to use an unlit because the thing we're modeling is its own light source. So it turns off the base color input, stops us using this different lighting model. So, um, But instead, we can just plug this straight into emissive. This is now really cheap. Uh, it's not doing any lighting calculations. Um, but for things like fire, um, lightning, plasma, all that kind of like magic glows. Um, actually, this is kind of what you want. You want it to always have that kind of like internal light to it. And as I change the light source values here, it's changing how that renders because it's in kind of comparison with the background colors. Um, but the actual plane here isn't taking any more or less lighting because it's all coming straight from, from that material. So that's pretty cool. Like I say, much, much cheaper on cost because we're not using any lighting information um, and just adding, add, additive, so adding those values to what's already rendered. Um, finally, well not finally, but next one, uh, we have modulate. Um, and so if additive is adding, modulate multiplies. So what it's doing is it's taking the pixel that's already been rendered and it's just multiplying the values in this over the top. Um, so if you have a colour of zero, uh, it's going to multiply by black and multiply the colour away, uh, full red. And you can bump these numbers up over one. So here we're getting very bright reds. So this isn't additive, uh, it's modulating. So it's multiplying these pixels by red, um, but by values of red over one, which is giving us this kind of glowing, kind of blooming type effect. So can be pretty useful um, if you want to darken things down that kind of effect. Um, notice if I change this back to try and be default lit, um, dynamic lit translucency does not work with a blend modulate, so you cannot use this with lit at all. Um, quite useful for things like decals, if you want to like create stains on walls, that kind of stuff, you might want to use a, a modulate blend mode. Um, and then the final one, uh, it's one of the, well, sort of a newer one, is what's called a pre-multiplied alpha, uh, or alpha composite. Um, and the best way to show this is probably with a demonstration. So if I change this to just have my two inputs, emissive color and opacity. Um, if my opacity is zero, I'm getting kind of uh, an additive um, response from this. So these values, uh, pixels are being added. If I could put my opacity to one, this is now working like a um, like a translucent. So it blends between additive and translucent based, based on the opacity value. So anything up to 0.5 is going to work kind of additive. Anything over 0.5 is going to work sort of translucent. Uh, and you can get some nice effects. So things like uh, explosions work really well with this. So as they first form, they're really thick. There's a load of e explosion texture fire in that. So you'd have a higher opacity. And then over its lifetime, it would fade out to be more additive and have more glow or possibly the other way around, whatever works for your effect. Um, if you want to uh, fade this out, you'll notice that the um, the square is always there. There's no value I can put into my opacity that gets rid of that, that outline. So how do I use a mask in this? Well, if I just bring in a mask, let's say I this AI spawn point, um, we have to, in this case, multiply it into both the color and the opacity channels. Then this should, if I find this correctly, give us our mask. So then when our opacity is at zero, it's working additively. Um, and so our values are, um, it's now using the, the, the dark in the color, the blacks in the color as um, kind of our mask. When our opacity is one, it's using the opacity here and blending between those. So you can see we're getting kind of completely different responses between the two as it changes from kind of a additive to a 
um, must um, well not a must, translucent um, so yeah uh, there's other shading models I'm not going to go into these so we've just done lit and unlit um, there's different things like subsurface skin, hair, eye cloth etc um, again pretty well documented they documented online so um, but uh, yeah I hope that's helpful uh, as always questions, comments etc um, let me know um, and I'll see you all next time